We're now here. At this moment, we're traveling towards the autumn equinox, and we'll be there in less than a month. The Earth gives us our units of time. The day is one rotation of the Earth on its axis. A year is the time the Earth takes to voyage around the Sun. The year has 365 days, but 365 is too big a figure to count days by, especially for our ancestors who were just emerging from the caves and becoming aware of passing time. They needed a simple, obvious calendar. The moon gave men the unit of time which has ruled our everyday lives for millennia. The moon revolves around the Earth in 28 days, four quarters of seven days, four weeks. It's the only object in the sky which looks different from night to night. Before our ancestors could even read or write, they'd learned to follow the celestial calendar. In a week, the new moon becomes a half moon. Another week, and the half moon becomes a full moon. There's a further week before the waning half moon, and a fourth week for the last quarter, ending in the new moon. That's where the seven-day week comes from. A 28-day lunar cycle divided into four quarters equals four weeks of seven days. The first weekday is named after the moon, Monday or Moon Day. The Earth also gives us our metric unit of distance. A kilometer is a ten thousandth of the distance from the North Pole to the equator. But the kilometer, very practical for visualizing distances between towns or continents, isn't very useful for measuring the solar system, and even less so for the distances to the stars. We measure those distances in light years. Light travels at 300,000 kilometers a second. A light year is the distance traveled by light in one year. That's nine million million kilometers. A nine with 12 zeros. So let's forget kilometers and work in light years. The pole star Polaris is 460 light years away. Light takes 460 years to reach us from Polaris. To define a distance in space, the distance from Earth to Polaris, we use a measure of time, the time light takes to cover this distance. The Earth also gives us another unit, a large and very useful one, the diameter of its orbit, 300 million kilometers. This unit helps us measure the distance to the nearest stars. Tonight, we are targeting Sirius, which lies in front of more distant stars. In six months, the Earth will have carried us to the other side of its orbit. Let's target Sirius again from here. It's shifted against the distant backdrop of stars. The angle gives us the distance to the star, eight light years. This is the principle of parallax, the angle between axes. Targeting this other star, Mersin, and then targeting it again six months later, we get a smaller angle. So Mersin is further away, 150 light years. With this frame of reference supplied by the Earth moving on its orbit, we can measure the distance to the stars. In turn, the stars guide us when we measure the movements of the planets. Over two years, Jupiter, in front of the constellation of Capricorn on the right, slides towards Pisces on the left. The groups of stars, the constellations behind the planets, form the zodiac. As the Earth travels on its orbit, the Sun also appears in successive sectors of the zodiac. At the moment, it's in front of the constellation Leo. The Sun in Leo at the end of August. According to the horoscope, it should be in Virgo. We mustn't mix up the constellations with astrological signs. Astrologers divide the zodiac into 12 equal sectors of 30 degrees each, while the constellations, patterns of stars, are of very different sizes. Leo covers an angle of 35 degrees, while Cancer is only nine degrees wide. 
Apart from that, over the millennia, the astrological signs handed down from ancient times have shifted against the constellations. The Leo sign slides to the right and no longer matches the constellation of Leo. Now it's the Virgo sign that corresponds to this constellation. So for astrologers, the sun is in the sign of Virgo, while astronomers see it in front of the constellation of Leo. It's up to you to choose. We are always combining measures of time and space. Your watch shows you the time using hands on a dial, which really shows the direction of the sun in space. Basically, your watch uses space to show you the time. So what is time? It's the wear and tear of your watch strap, or getting older as you look at the time. Is a day one rotation of the earth time or space? Is a light year a distance in space or a unit of time? We find it hard to grasp time because it's a fourth dimension we can't visualize. Imagine a big planet peopled with two-dimensional beings like paper cutouts. They can't visualize a planet, a three-dimensional sphere, because they only have two dimensions. Like us, they've learned that the sum of the angles in a triangle is always 180 degrees. In fact, if the triangle is on a sphere, its angles can add up to more than 180 degrees. But our flat friends can't understand that. They're flat, and in a flat world, there are only 180 degree triangles. But they draw bigger and bigger triangles until one day they discover that a huge triangle has more than 180 degrees because it's on a sphere. But they can't imagine this third dimension, this sphere, so they build up philosophical theories to reconcile their two-dimensional universe with the mystery of the third dimension they're beginning to discover. As we explore the universe, we are gradually discovering what could be a fourth dimension. Perhaps this dimension is time, and perhaps one day we'll understand. <laughs>